For this section, assembly of the AB drives and idlers begin with installing heat sets. I showed how to do this in the last video. It does smell, so I recommend working in a ventilated area. There are four pieces here that look the same, but only one needs the heat sets. I assemble the A idler using flange 695 bearings. It will be a chore to disassemble and remove these if they break, so use the best quality pieces possible. There is no monetary incentive to say good or bad about any brands seen in my videos. Please share any personal experience in the comments as this helps the community out. A M5 bolt is used to hold the bearings and shims in place while you pop the cover on and flip it over. Secure the tension arm with the same bolt and leave the fastener slightly loose for belt routing. Check the proper orientation of everything before proceeding. The B idler assembly is the same but with different looking printed parts. Similar process with the A B drives as two upside down screws hold everything in place. Note on the right side, there are two M5 shims between the bearings. After attaching the top piece, the two screws are threaded directly into plastic, so no need to over tighten those. A and B motors. Use the jig to align the 22 6 millimeter pulley and lock tight the set screws. FYI, all the 16 tooth and 9 millimeter wide pulleys should already have been used on the Z drives. Also note that idler pulleys don't have set screws. The A and B motor wires need to face each other in the gantry. Note that the pulley on the B drive is mounted lower, and this is marked on the jig. It's because the A and B belts route above and below each other. Before we continue, double check that everything is assembled correctly. Make sure you didn't forget any shims or install pulleys and bearings upside down. After you work for hours, it's easy to make careless mistakes, and these can be easily fixed at this point. Once we continue, we only keep adding more parts and complexity. For the gantry, I am using the AliExpress T-nuts, which cannot be rolled in post-install. Attach the A and B drives to the shortest rear extrusion and leave the bolts slightly loose. For the Y-axis, we repeat the rail install. Both rails should be the same as the Z-rails in terms of length and number of mounting bolts. Leave 25 millimeters from one end of the rail, in my case, the right side with the doubled up bolts. Tighten the bolts down from the center outwards to straighten out any bowing in the rail. When it comes to inserting the M3 and M5 T-nuts at the ends, they may stick out. In my case, this happened on the rail mounted side. I need to switch out the outer pieces with the shorter profile Masumi M5 T-nuts. I have seen other people swap the inner nuts with the hammerhead M3 which rotate in place for better clearance. While pushing the idler onto the end of the extrusion, check that it is flush with the piece. On my setup, I installed it on the double bolted rail ends where I previously spaced out the 25 millimeters. Before you continue, check that both bottom T-nut holes are visible. I had to remove the idler and flip the M3 T-nut around because the holes did not line up. Grrr. The right XY joint pieces have notches for cabling to run through. Time for more stacking. Fasten the four bolts. The last one goes through the six millimeter idler pulley. Don't over tighten that. It should spin freely. Repeat for the left XY joint. After you build both, you will have used up all 20 flange 695 bearings specked out in the bomb. The X axis is assembled with the larger MGN 12H guides and eight bolts. I am leaving 15 millimeters from the double bolted end. Attach the XY joints to the X axis and leave the bolts slightly loose. Don't worry, we will tighten all of these later. Flip the gantry upside down with the motor bottoms facing up. Tilt and slide in the X axis. Fully tighten the four bolts on the right side and only the two bolts marked on the left side. As I move the X axis, you can see binding at the rear extrusion and the Y axis bowing in and out. Keep this in mind until we square the gantry. Now it is time to install the Z-belts. The manual has you decide whether or not to use Hall Effect. If so, it instructs you to insert a magnet into a grooved Z-bearing block. Stop! Some people have glued magnets in just to find out the pole was facing the wrong direction and ruined their plastic. Friendly reminder, there are no spare parts with PIF. The Hall Effect calibration is done after the build is completed, so there is no need to mount this magnet now. The choice you do have to make is whether to use the Z-bearing block with the magnet hole. 
there is actually a fifth block without the hole for those dead set on using micro switches. I am installing the piece with the hole so I have more choices later on. For now, I am going with micro switches. They are proven, easier to set up, and have a long life cycle, even on my 10 year old printer. I'm going to grab my 9mm wide belt. The bomb recommends 1100mm cuts for the 300 size printer. I have a 6 meter long belt so I have some leeway here. That is about 43 inches per cut. With the gantry still upside down, line up the belt teeth with the matching notches in the XY joint. The yellow belt clip also has a notch that needs to face the belt as well. I suggest holding this piece together with the bolts and bearing blocks so the M5 nut inside doesn't fall out while trying to line everything up. Note that the block of the Hall Effect hole needs to mount in this lower right corner next to the A motor. Time to lift the gantry in place and this gets a bit hairy. Since I already zip tied my carriages, I was able to rest the gantry while using twine to secure it. Ask for someone else to help if needed. You don't want to drop this thing. Here is also your chance to make sure you install your Z rails correctly. Moving on, the Z joints are simply installed with four screws and after I secure those, I cut off the zip ties holding the carriages. These rail rubber stops come in handy as you can move them up and use them as a backup if the twine fails. As you attach the Z joints to the gantry, it's easiest and best if the gantry is level all the way around. That way, the bolts don't go in crooked and cross thread something. To prepare for Z belt routing, we loosen the yellow belt clamps and idler pulleys up top. I found it easiest to just remove the top bolt and nut entirely and screw it back in four turns after the threads catch. The two screws under the eyebrows have to be loosened too or else it won't budge. The Z belts go straight down to the pulley under the deck panel and come right back up. Be careful not to go around the plastic like I did here. Route it around the pulley, back up the deck panel hole, and through the motor mount. Then go around the idler pulley up top, back down, and finally through the loosened belt clamp. If you aren't sure about the proper tension, here's my tip. First, check the Z drive belts for reference. Spin that motor pulley, which eliminates any belt slop from the side going into it. Keep pulling any belt slack out all the way around until it reaches the clip. Tighten those two screws while still pulling on the belt. This allows for tight, consistent tension on all four corners, and it's fine because it will loosen after it breaks in. Let's do a pulse check on the gantry alignment. Start by making sure the left and right Y axes are the same distance from the top. This ensures our gantry is not sitting crooked inside the frame. Again, you can manually turn the Z motors to move this up and down. Slide the X axis back and forth to check that the left and right XY joints touch the frame corners at the same time. If it doesn't, we have bolts loosened from earlier and can wiggle it straight. Once you are happy, tighten these bolts down. There are two on the top and one on the bottom. Repeat for the other side. Next, check for binding front to back. On mine, there was resistance at the very end, which was also fixed by the bolts we left loose on the rear extrusion. By adjusting the distance between the A and B motors, we can eliminate any binding front to back. Tighten the four screws on each side and that's it. For the AB belt routing, the manual tells you to start by extending the AB idlers. I could not make any sense out of this picture whatsoever and decided to skip this. When you get to the preparation page, this X carriage is for the afterburner, and PIF now ships parts for stealth burner. We need to open up another manual for that assembly. There are two more heat sets up top for the stealth burner carriage. One problem is I don't see a place for the Hall Effect magnet. On the previous afterburner, it would mount where the lower M3 nut is, but I am not confident enough to make that assumption here. I could not find this information anywhere, and this is the main reason I decided to stick with micro switches. Before belting, here is your chance to make sure your X rail and everything assembled up to now is correct. It only gets harder to remove these from this point on. The bomb specs out two 6mm wide belts that are 1800mm long. My belt is 4 meters long, so I simply cut it down the middle. Per the manual, I am doing a test run with the A belt and following the path outline. Going around the left XY joint is easy as it just rides on the flange 695 bearings. Fish it between the narrow space between the joint and the extrusion. It goes straight through a hole in the B drive and comes out the backside. Go around the corner bearing and there is a notch in the plastic for the belt to ride over without catching. 
The A drive is a bit trickier as you have to go around a bearing before going inside and around the motor pulley, and then finally coming back out and around another bearing. Allen keys or thin tools can help direct the belt end. Note that the belt should not ride along the outer plastic shown here. Fish the belt towards the front right idler, once again squeezing in between the extrusion and plastic parts. There are two holes to the idler, one for the belt to go in and the other for it to come back out. This corner is tight. I had the best luck removing the M3 screw and washer completely. Again, using a thin Allen key, you can navigate the belt around the pulley. Once you come back around, route the belt toward and around the top idler pulley on the right XY joint, and then finally back to the center carriage. Check your work. The belt sags easily on the left side, so you need to pull it tight. On the right, don't let the belt sag down to the bottom bearings on the XY joint. We need that clear for the B belt. At this point, you have a rough idea of how much excess belt can be cut off. After doing that, I removed the belt entirely, undoing all my hard work. Line up the other B belt on the table and cut both belts to the exact same length down to the tooth. Insert both A and B belt ends back onto the X carriage. As you see, both ends are sticking out the same distance. I am going to start with the top A belt, which is a repeat of what we just did. The bottom B belt is reversed. The worst part here is the B idler in which you have to use a really small Allen key or tool to shove the belt around that pulley. When all is said and done, pull tight on both belt ends and the same amount of notches should be sticking out. That's how you know they are tensioned equally. Move the x-axis front to back. If you did it right, the carriage should not be moving diagonally and remain somewhat in place. There should not be any belt binding or funky stuff going on. This wasn't in the manual, but I assume now is a good time to check and retighten the Z and AB idlers. Otherwise, wait until the belts break in. At this point, I installed the inductive probe and that ends this section. Thank you for watching today and see you all next time.